Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for April 21st of 2023. Oh my goodness. Time flies when you're having fun, eh? All right, so let's see. Still kind of getting settled in here this morning. We'll take some deep breaths here in a moment. And let me get my phone shut off and make sure I don't have <sighs> any outside disturbances. Hey there. And good morning to everybody who is here live. Um, I do appreciate you checking in and chat here. And we have a lot of great people in chat who can assist with uh, clarification of questions and answers. And again, if you are here live and would like to post a question, please do post that in the questions tab. And if you are watching on YouTube, you are welcome to join us live. Uh, simply sign up for a newsletter at twistedsage.com. Newsletters at the bottom of the website. And we'll let you know when we do our 50 questions Fridays. All right. So... Hey, John from Minnesota, Nika from Dane Point, California, and Victoria from Northern California. Oh my goodness, can't wait to get out to Northern Cali this summer, take my daughter out to see the Redwoods. Hey, Sam from Lawrenceville, Georgia, and Rachel from the Ozarks. Hey, Ted from Telford, UK. Hey, Nancy. And Linda from Southern Cali. So, um, gosh, yes, appreciate you all showing up here live today. And um, let's see, I guess I'll make some announcements. We're going to do a, for Earth Day, we're going to go ahead and do a meditation here at the end. And we're just going to do a really deep dive journey and uh, step in with the heart of the Earth. So we'll save that meditation for the end. Hey, Victoria from New York City. Um, <laughs> Liz from New Mexico. <laughs> Good to see you guys. So let's go ahead and take our three breaths to move into the heart space. And for any of you who are new here, basically we do what we call the Trinity breath, which is we use our imagination, visualization, intention, and we just connect heart to heart with the earth with a breath, heart to heart with you as creator, God, soul, source, however you see that and take that as a breath. And the third breath is where you are grounded, connected, and it moves you from the head into that sacred space of the heart. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the three breaths. Oh, close in your eyes. If you wish, it's just simpler and easier to get to the heart space. And imagine within your heart is your light, that soul's fire, that spark of you. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that energy, that support, that light of the earth. Up through the feet and into the heart. And next you connect with you as creator God, source, soul, however you see that. Breathe that light into the heart, which that light is always already there with you. The third breath is where we take in that breath from both directions, if you will. Basically just breathing in that light from the earth, from creation, and you become a column of light that is grounded, connected, and you as that conduit between heaven and earth. Beautiful. All right. So we'll jump into some announcements here. Um, let's see. We've had, uh, we, we were doing a, well, and we are doing an experiment where we have the wisdom rings um, in that are on sale right now. Actually, we have an entire storewide sale going on from April 20th to the 25th. So that's for our Earth Day celebration sale. So that is storewide. Um, but the wisdom rings, 
we we have those on sale and people have been doing an experiment with um seedlings seeds and plants and so we've had um gosh three really good um three people that have sent in pictures and testimonials <laughs> they've been really fantastic so far um and we'll start posting those as well but basically there's one that shows a, a p and one is this big and one is this big and that's just even and they were just using a wi-fi ring which any tensor ring is going to be great it's just that the wisdom rings bring in a little bit extra which is the consciousness of the plant more um then we have somebody who did a flats um flats of of um for sprouts and it was pretty amazing because they have a really large flat and they put one ring underneath the flat and then they had another flat, their control group right next to it. And <laughs> what the pictures show is that the, that entire flat, um, it's not just in that column where that ring is creating the column of energy. It is that entire flat that is growing faster. Now, this person had the second flat, the control group right next to it. And they noticed after the first day of, of growth that they were the same. And so their intuition said, well, that ring is actually spreading out farther being underneath of there. So they moved the two apart. And then over the next few days, they really noticed a difference in those two um, groups. And um, so basically what they said in their testimonial was that it shaved a couple days of time off of growing their, their sprouts. So anyway, there's been some really good testimonials and photos and we'll get those posted up onto a blog here. Um, let's see what else. Um, the upcoming events, we still have Brighton, Colorado this month and not much happening in May. I don't believe June. We have a few things. Uh, we'll be out in new york state in june at uh the the suny college campus i'll be speaking for the american society of dowsers and doing a workshop as well and that's going to be on light anchoring both the presentation and the um the workshop so yeah, anyway we'll have more information online about that in our other upcoming events let's see we have something in August in Aztec, New Mexico. It's going to be an outdoor family event. Um, so let's see. Moving on to uh, some of the new products. Well, one of the new products that we have is actually a, a chain for the Quantum Heart Coil Pendant for the copper one. It's a rose gold, and it's actually a sterling silver chain that is plated with rose gold, so it looks like copper. Um, I don't have an extra one here to get you a good picture of it. But um, those ones are available now on the website. And it's still a pretty affordable pendant. It's $49 with the gold chain and the quantum heart coil pendant in copper. And then it's also, of course, we have the silver with the silver chain as well. Um, but these, uh, the quantum heart coil pendant has really shifted here recently to from, from my perspective. Because before I was only, you know, I was not feeling that was the, the the best of the tools for for some people but now then um you know especially at these shows recently i'm just really feeling that these quantum heart coil pendants are fantastic for every person i run into um and they just to me they're feeling like they're more expansive they're just bringing in more of your light they're very grounding um so anyway quantum heart coil pendants with the new rose gold chain and what else do we have that's new? Um, oh gosh, there was something else. Oh yeah, our cell phone tabs. We are putting our cell phone tabs at a buy two, get one free. And so um, we'll just put some rate, of, rate about manufacturing cost. So anyway, we just wanted to do that just to help promote the cell phone tabs and get them out there further because they really are a fantastic, fantastic tool. Um, you know, again, the cell phone tabs are these smaller ones. And of course, I have the one for your electrical panel and your computer, and it's just for show. But the cell phone tabs are marvelous tools. So let's see. Um, 
Well, good. And Victoria mentioned that you took the four coils from your rainmaker. We had a record rain this winter and stuck them in the center of four pots on sprouting seeds. And we'll let know. So that's it too. If if you don't have the wisdom rings and you have some of the other tools, we would love to see some experiments that you do with them because again, we will be offering um, either discounts or free tools for those who are doing these experiments and send us in photos, you know, side by side comparisons as well as testimonials. So anyway, we appreciate uh, we appreciate everybody that's participating in that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into questions here. Oh, one question from Nancy. How does the Badar coil help the food I eat? Does it make some food that is not organic, make it organic and beneficial to my health? So the Badar coils really are one of my favorites. Oh gosh, and I can't believe I don't have a Badar coil sitting right here or in my bag. Um, so the Badar coils are they're they're kind of like a a potent tensor ring in that for water they'll they'll charge water faster but um all of the tensor rings that we create including the ring with the Badar coil uh, we've seen that for years that they are working with gmos in that they will take a gmo seed and revert it back to its original most beneficial dna so that when you place a seed on there, it changes it. Um, plants, if you put the rings with plants, that it will take a GMO plant. And by the time it reaches fruition, that fruit, the seeds, is non-GMO. It is back to that highest and best original DNA. So working with your food and with the person. So basically, the, the, the tensor rings that we create are also working with your DNA, and they are clearing out the harmful effects of genetically modified organisms that you may consume. Now, if you're using it with your food, yes, it is raising the frequency and vibration of the food, and it is clearing out any of the non-beneficial energetics within that food. And so the Badar coils are really a fantastic one because they do work fast. Um, you know, it's nice to let your plate of food sit there for two minutes with it. Um, you know, in that Badar coil, you can just sit it underneath the plate or with the food. Um, and so what it is doing, yes, it is raising the frequency and vibration of, of the water and the food, of the food itself, clearing any dense energies. Um, it is also bringing in the consciousness more. So if you, whatever it is that you are eating, it is bringing that in and clearing it more. So whether it is plant, animal, mineral, water, oil base, whatever it is, it is raising the frequency and vibration of that food. It doesn't matter what it is that you're eating. Um, so, you know, and, and, Two, you know, just kind of an extra concept there is that we have seen that, you know, we, we haven't met hardly any medications, pharmaceuticals, anything from, from childhood shots to pills that you take. We have, we've only met like one thing ever, and that was a nebulizer that we could not shift the energetics of it to where it is beneficial to you. And so, you know, like most pharmaceuticals, we see that it's not necessarily the physical component, but the energetic aspect of that pharmaceutical that is so harmful to people. So again, this clears that energetic aspect. And, and then it also brings everything in to harmonize it. And that's the beautiful thing about all the tools we create is that they are harmonizing whatever it is that you're bringing into your field, whether you are internally ingesting it, bringing it into your field, into your home, however it is. Um, it is shifting that energetic component of it. So a little bit long winded on that answer, but thank you for the question, Nancy. Um, Mary, so many options for water. I've been using the Badar coil, but curious which piece is the best. So really what I, I still feel that the, the absolute best for water is the set of three water rings. Um, they just bring, you know, the Badar coil is great. It works fast, but we have had people do taste tests and 
you know, it varies between people that we that we've worked with with doing taste tests with the water. Um, and, and some people just really like the taste of the water using the three water rings. Um, it just brings through l more levels and layers. And to me, it's almost like more organic style. Um, I guess I really don't know how to explain it. That's just kind of the feel of it. But for if you really want the absolute best with your water, the, the set of three water rings are fantastic with water. Um, so that's that's really the best out of everything you know and the single water ring the water alchemy ring is also really wonderful now again the only difference between well one of the differences between the water alchemy ring and the beta coil the beta coil acts on it faster but I still like the water alchemy ring with my water. It just takes, you know, four to six hours for, for it to fully restructure the water. Um, you can drop that down to two to four hours with a set of three rings and down to, you know, less than two hours of that beta coil, depending on your water. Uh, second part of the question, I put a column of light around a tower and someone else looks at that tower with disgust. Is the column of light removed or is it removed only if they look at the tower? Okay, let me reword this question. So when you anchor a column of light into a cell phone tower, that cell phone tower will then produce beneficial energies. Now, each of us are sovereign beings with our own everything so if if this person looks at the cell phone tower as the question says like in disgust oh that cell phone tower is frying me then their fear and their beliefs and everything else override the work that you did with that cell phone tower only for them that cell phone tower is still holding that column of light in the highest and best for everybody. But that one person that is their, it is their own energy, their own perspective that they create that cell phone tower to be non-beneficial to them and to them only. Everybody else in the world who doesn't look at it, doesn't even recognize that cell tower or doesn't look at it with, with fear or anything they are still receiving the beneficial energies from that light column that you've created there. A uh, question, which item is best for an iPad? Um, you know, you can use just the cell phone tabs for iPads. I really like the computer, the, um, the alchemist tab, the alchemist tab is a little bit more potent. Um, and it, you know, but it's not really necessary. There just brings a lot more levels and layers into the energetics with the alchemist tab than it does with the cell tab. But the cell tab is still going to be a perfect one for an iPad. Um, and again, if you're using a laptop, we usually suggest the laptop ring to go underneath of the laptop. Oh, Rochelle. Previously, you have indicated that the function of the tools may be affected by the level of belief that you may have in them. The level of belief you may have. So, so the tools, ye yes. Um, I guess let me rephrase that question too with the answer. Um, basically, the tool, the tensor ring will create that innate field when you interact with it with consciousness with intent um and yes with beliefs so your energy interacts with the tool it amplifies everything greatly so i mean you know like the beta coil that we talk about the beta coil i see that it produces a, a, a column of light about 18 inches out from it when you just look, you put your awareness on that beta coil, it expands that column of light to about 36 inches just by looking at it, just by having your awareness there with it. Now, yes, your beliefs can have an effect on the tools. 
again, it was kind of like what we talked about with that cell phone tower. And we do have some people who have, you know, a tensor field generator in their home, but yet they still, you know, and this is a phone call we get about every couple of months that somebody says, well, you know, I have this tensor field generator, but I'm still being fried by all the electromagnetics. And so what we do is we step in and we simply, we do, you know, I guess I'm pretty straight up anymore with people and say, okay, that is your belief that is creating that it's negating the field. Your tensor field generator is still working fine for everybody else in the area, especially like the golden fire where it has a two and a half mile sphere of influence is still working phenomenally for everybody in that whole area. But if your belief, if your fears are, are overriding, again, we are such powerful creators in our beliefs that we create through fear and limitation. That is what we project into the field and that is what we receive. So truly, um, when you are in the heart space and you just step aside, you step out of your belief structures and you simply allow all that is in the highest and best, you allow everything to work. The tensor field generators are then going to be working to where that person no longer feels that sensitivity to the electromagnetics. So it's, um, and that's kind of like what I do in my, in my soul alchemy, um, one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, and twisted sage under healing distance healing, both my sister and I are there, but that's usually what I end up doing in, in any of the sessions that I do with people is basically it's just talking the mind into allowing to step aside and to allow everything that is truly innate there with the energetics to flow and to function. Um, because yes, you know, and that's too why, why working with animals and plants is so much easier. Animals and plants respond so much better to, to the tensor fields and a lot of people who hold on to their crap and are resistant and put up their little field and, and don't allow. Um, so yes, thank you for, for that. Um, and then, uh, Rochelle continued here for that question. Um, the situation the question is here first. The situation is written after. Is there something you would suggest to assist this receptivity without? I'm sorry, I don't quite. Let me see if I can reread this question silently to, to see what exactly. the So I can understand the question. Okay, so this is for somebody who, who, um, I'm sorry, Rochelle, if you could re re rewrite that question, because I don't quite understand where we're going there. Um, Liz, how can I use the ether elemental? That is a very good question. So the, the ether, out of all the elementals that we have, the ether, it says, I have no name, I am everything. It is very elusive to most people, but those who are attracted to it, there is a reason for that. Now, with the ether elemental, I simply see the ether elemental as being the canvas of creation, that it is, it is divinity, it is everything, that this ether elemental is simply the space, the canvas for creation to, to be upon. And so I feel that working with that ether elemental that it's not necessarily from the mind. It is, it is, it's a higher remembrance. It's a knowingness that comes through and that's heart based, soul based, higher self based. And so this knowing and this remembrance that comes through with that ether elemental, I feel that you just, um, and this weekend, somebody asked me this question at a holistic fair too in Cincinnati. And, and, and it was really amazing what came through for that answer, but it was basically about how, when you connect with that ether elemental and see it as a blank canvas, clear out your entire canvas of creation. And that just helps you take those things that are dense or non-beneficial out of your creation, whether that is old belief structures or traumas or whatever that is. And it just helps you clear that canvas of, of, 
of all creation. Um, hmm. Yeah, that that answer was not quite as eloquent, but yeah, Liz, working with the ether elemental, it is one that brings through basically it's more of a wisdom thing than it is a mental construct thing. So um, yeah, what I just tell people with the ethers is just sit with it, and and you'll receive you know information in a different way, wisdom versus knowledge. Uh, Nika. Uh, thank you, Nika. Do you have any suggestions for tools, methods, or guidance sources to reattach the meniscus due to a complete tear at the root? So for doing the physical healing, the tools that I suggest are, well, the tool that I suggest is the full-size wisdom wand. This is absolutely my favorite tool. I keep mine <laughs> tethered and corded onto my bag. Um, you know, I always keep a wisdom wand around. The wisdom wands are truly my favorite tool because one, you can run energy with it. And then when you're running energy with it, not only are you running the energy of, of this tool, but you are also running your light to it. And truly it is your light, your consciousness, that is the most powerful thing in creation and basically when you use the wisdom wand you are going through what and clearing out the source of what that creation is that no longer serves you um you know a lot of the creations that we that we have that are dis-ease and things are simply helping us step into our empowerment um for clearing and doing the healing work for ourselves but some of them, you know, well, a lot of them are tied to old traumas, not only in this lifetime, but other lifetimes it can be hereditary too. So when we do the work with the wisdom wand and we are running energy to that area, we are going in and clearing the root cause of what that came from, whether that was a trauma or in another time experience whatever that was it is going to the source of that and bringing that in as wisdom once you clear the energetic component then you can allow the physical component to heal because that is what healing is healing is release and rebalancing so you release what it is that is that core issue that caused that physical thing in the first place because everything is energy you know we see cancers beginning in an emotional field and when you just totally mm, don't even look at it and it manifests into the physical as dense energy and that is what manifests as cancer in the emotional and so clearing and release is is the main part but then the rebalancing part for the physical to come into balance sometimes it takes longer sometimes if you can allow it it can be instant i mean we see instant healings a lot but sometimes it takes a little time. And so you have to have patience with it. And once you do the original work, you can just keep running energy to it, but not fighting it. Just trust that you got to the core and the source of what that issue was. Um, okay, uh, so here's some clarification on that question. Um, my work involves use of Wi-Fi and radio wave cordless phones. It seems that my partner's well-being is affected by those vibes. I have used many of the tools throughout the home to heal those vibes. Okay, so that's, that's really a tough one because, yes, these tools are going to be harmonizing all these energies. But it is still truly up to the person that if they, if they do, you know, it, it's, it's their journey and their path. So if their journey and their path is, is, is like, okay, I'm, I'm allowing these tools to affect me adversely. Um, you know, how then, then basically it comes down to how do you get another person to, to allow these tools to work for them. Um, and that's a tough one because 
that, you know, working to convince the mind is, is so basically when I say that I do this work to help to convince the mind, I have a different way of speaking directly to the ego that bypasses the ears. Because when you start talking to somebody and trying to convince them of things and you're talking, you know, and you're using words and concepts and you're being mental, sometimes that can very well be blocked. So what I would suggest to talk to your partner in a way to where you're not using words and talking directly to him. You go into the heart space. Once you're in the heart space, you invite him in. And then you talk to him. You talk to his soul. You talk to his higher self. And um, you just hold that light. So you don't really need to talk with words because when you're in the heart space, your soul knows what it is that you are trying to convey. And then you are working soul to soul. So truly, you have what it is, your, your, your concept that you wish to convey, those things that you wish to share. You go into the heart space. You invite that person into your field. And you just allow your light to shine, which is simply your communication from your soul. You just simply allow your light to shine to that other person. And then you are speaking soul to soul. And then it's truly up to between them and their soul, how they choose to bring that into the physical world. But that is the way truly to work with everything and anything is you go soul to soul because a lot of times you can talk until your tongue swells and it may not be received, but when you do it soul to soul, that is received. So that's, that's where, um, yeah, that's, that's where to be with that. Um, yeah. So yeah, Rochelle, that's, what I would say is to just do the soul to soul work and, and not work on anything in the, the mental. So, because any of that, when you go on soul to soul, and again, that transcends the beliefs and some of us hold on to our belief structure so tight that we will not allow in other beliefs. And so that's when you're talking mono and mono, human to human, and concepts and everything, knowledge base. So again, be in the heart, go soul to soul with him. That's where the real communication comes. And again, you don't have to sit there and try to figure out your words in your conversation with him. You go into the heart, your soul knows what it is that you wish to convey beyond words, beyond concepts and just allow that light to shine with them. That's, that's that higher communication. Let's see. Um, JR regarding the three water rings, can I use just the nine and a half inch harmonizer and the other two smaller rings that fit inside of it instead? Um, you know, yes, the, um, so the water rings themselves, this outer one is the harmonizer ring. So in this water out or so in the alchemist set of rings, we have the harmonizer ring and you can use any size of harmonizer ring. You can use the laptop ring, the largest water ring or the smaller water ring. Then we have the chalice in the divine I am. So if there's two smaller rings, if you have those two smaller rings, and again, it doesn't matter the size, but that alchemy set is the harmonizer, the chalice, and the divine I am. And those three make that, that um, alchemist set. Now, you can also use a wisdom ring in replace. So if you have that outer harmonizer ring and you have either a chalice or a divine I am, and you just have one of those, then you can use a wisdom ring too, because the wisdom ring will carry the energetics of the harmonizer, the chalice, and the divine I am. So, yeah, you can use any of those in combination to create that alchemist energetics. Uh, Nancy, can I just put the Badar coil in my purse or bra or pocket, and does this help the power of the coil to make my food organics, etc.? So, 
Yes, let me tell you a quick story. When we first created the the tensor coil and the harmony, um, basically what that did was that entrained into my field. I used to always send my my energy and my consciousness, my thoughts, my prayers, however you see it, into the food that I eat. So it would go back. So if it was if it was a, an animal, you would send that energy back to when it was born, all the way through its entire life cycle up to everything to the here now same with a plant that entire cycle of it coming out of the ground all the people who touch it all the people who harvest it everything you send the energy back in time from the inception of that creation all the way to when it is going into your mouth so that is how i used to work with my food my water my everything well, that at one time became entrained into my field. And that is truly what we're doing with these tools. Now, this was when I was wearing the, the coil pendant, that it entrained those intentions. So basically, all I did was work with that coil pendant. And I would run that energy into my food with everything that I just mentioned. And after a while, that became a part of my field. So yes, you can integrate this into your field, especially with intention. So if you have that beta coil and you're carrying it anywhere on your person, it is holding that space. And as you have that intention of when you're coming to that food, then yes, totally because your attention and intention is so powerful and these tools simply help hold that space work together and amplify your intentions and attention when you do the work so um yes thank you for that question because um because yes and and or else you can use that coil and put it underneath your food run the energy over top that's what I'll do too is, is, you know, if I'm sitting at a restaurant because I too like to make a scene with tools is I'll just take that and, you know, just run it over the top of the food in there. I only do it for a few seconds because my attention and intention is right there working with that. So if you're just innately working with that beta coil and you're not, you know, you're just having conversation, you just slip it underneath your plate, wait two minutes and then you're fine. Or else you can just actually do it in a few seconds using your energy and your light as well coming from the heart and not coming from oh i got to change this food because it's not good for me that is in a place of of the head and the fear so when you are doing any of this work you go into the heart space and you trust your light and you just run your light into that food um, and can I send positive outcomes to family and friends with my Bader coil or with what other of the tools? So the Bader coil is, is, a, is a wonderful one. Any of the tools that we create, the tensor field generators or ring the Bader coil, there's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, you know, the old fashioned way would have been, you know, which they do in broadcasting of radionics or or um, frequencies, whatever, you know, a lot of them will have the witness, which is, you know, a lot of people like to put in the DNA, like a, you know, like a fingernail or a piece of hair. That's the way some people broadcast. And they put that inside of their broadcaster for like radionics and such. And same with the tensor rings, whatever it is. So you can put in there the witness, the sample, and that can simply be a picture of them. You can write their name on a piece of paper or you can just use your visualization and imagination and sit there with this ring in the heart space and imagine that that person or that situation is just standing right there in that column of light. And again, when you do this work, you're not trying to fix, change, or heal. You, this is simply a way for you to go soul to soul and to bring your higher potentials to them because when we get caught in this little box of limited potentials, that is what our creation is. These limited potentials of creation. But when you shine your light from that higher space, you are reminding them of the higher potentials of their creation. And that opens up the possibilities. And so, um, yep. So being in the heart space, just shining your light. So 
the wisdom wand again is another wonderful tool because I love the wisdom wand because you can run energy to another person or a situation. And as you're running that energy, again, you're just being in the heart and you're sharing that energy of those higher potentials, basically your light, soul to soul. That is what you're doing with the tools when you do that distance work. So yes, totally can do distance work because these are quantum fields that, that transcend time and space. Uh, and thank you for, again, thank you, Rochelle, for the question. And yeah, totally soul to soul, heart to heart is the way to work. Uh, Lizzie, I've been drawn lately to sleep with the Badar coil on my pillow. Just curious as to what it might be doing as I sleep. So using the tools during the sleep time is a fantastic way to utilize these tools because so much of the release and integration occurs when we are asleep. So, you know, and you might be called to sleep a lot more recently. And that's fantastic because again, these tools will hold that space. So using that beta coil on your pillow, sleeping with a big ring or rings on your bed, however you do it, that you are within those fields at night. Um, not only is it going to be helping to release things in dream time. And so a lot of people have crazy dreams recently and don't read too much into your dreams. If you're doing this work of, if you're stepping in and you're here right now watching this, you're obviously stepping into that awakening process, which that is simply doing the release and the clearing, you becoming a conscious creator of things that no longer serve you. And a lot of that happens through dream time. So when you are using these tools that can allow things to shift through and release during your dream time, no matter how crazy the dreams are. Um, so again, don't read too much into those dreams because your mind just has to process it. It, it brings through, yeah, it's, it's a funny processor and it may not be really what is happening in those dreams. Um, and then to the, the physical body that, that rejuvenation and all of that is really fantastic while you're sleeping too, because that is, it's almost like it is because we're working on bringing in our light bodies, our light bodies, which will take over the old system of all the neurons and the networks and everything else. And when you're sleeping, that is when you more allow in that light body to step in, which is truly where we're going to see some pretty phenomenal things take place with our physical. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, Rochelle. Um, and again, talking about working with your partner um, and putting things with your partner. So the, the ether elemental, as you were mentioning, putting there, you know, that's, I feel that using, so with somebody who is not, um, you know, open and receptive to the tools, I would suggest any of the wisdom tools, whether that's a beta or coil, because that's in the wisdom energetics or a simple wisdom ring and having, or even the wisdom wand, but having those wisdom tools with the person or the divine I am tensor field generator in your home, the divine I am tensor field generator is a fantastic one too, because that can just sit anywhere in the home and it is always working with the person. So whether they are into this work or not, it is holding that space for them to do that deep release. And that's the same with like the, the new energy Gaia sphere, very similar energetics and, and similar workings. Um, so the, the ether to me is more, <clears throat> more of kind of an advanced tool for it, it. I don't feel that it is necessarily an automatic thing, unlike the wisdom tools or the divine I am generator, which those ones are more of an automatic thing when you are in those fields. Uh, Nika, how do you feel eclipses, solar flares, and other celestial events affect our evolution and what tools assist in amplifying or maybe smoothing out the energy that showers us during these events? Yeah, you know, the, the solar flares do affect us a lot and the eclipses do bring in other energies. Um, you know, so the, the tools can help you keep grounded and balanced you know, especially with like some of the solar flares and such, because those really do affect our electromagnetic being. And so just using the tools to help you stay 
grounded and centered and connected, you know, and again, that's what I really like any of the coils like the quantum heart coil pendants or, or the, um, the wisdom wand pendants or the small wisdom wands, um, or even the tensor coil pendants, any of those coil style pendants are just helping to stay more balanced, aligned and grounded. And so that's how I would work with those energies. The other energies, um, you know, like the, um, uh, what is it like the mercury retrograde and things like that they can have an effect on us as can your your horoscope your you know i'm a sagittarius and this is what i am i would suggest that to step out of a lot of those astrological things because they they are they they have been very influential on us but they don't have to be that is a part to me of of stepping out especially things that bring detriment you know mercury retrograde oh my god mercury retrograde and oh everything is going to be working horribly and and have all these miscommunications holy shit are you amplifying all that that is stepping into that belief and that limitation to me i'm like eh, you know what mercury i'm going to give you the big finger and I'm going to step into my sovereignty, into my power, and I'm not going to let it affect me. So, you know, that's, it's options. It's options on how you want to step through. But to me, it is stepping more into your sovereignty, your power, and saying, no, that is not, I'm not participating in that energy anymore. And I'm going to stay within my own energy and everything's going to be beautiful as far as you know stepping into a mercury retrograde where it's supposed to be all this detrimental stuff so anyway that's that's how i've kind of always felt about you know the astrological stuff though you know i still have participated in it and such but um let's see i have relatives in a distant country who have great issues major heart blockage caused by brain damage he remains in the hospital with minimum interactive brain function which lower cost tool do you recommend me sending to them? So, um, you know, having a, having any of the tools that you want to gift anybody, it depends on, you know, and as far, as far as the economics go, the quantum heart coil pendant is the most economical of the pendants that we create and is powerful. If they will utilize and they'll wear, wear a pendant, you know, that's, that's something too, it depends on the person and if you feel that they would use that tool. Otherwise, you know, the tensor field generators and the wisdom or the divine I am, that's, that is one of the, you know, that's not a cheap one. That's like 163, 169 bucks for that generator. But that generator is again, doing wonderful things for everything in the vicinity. But for the least expensive would be, um, you know, the, the, uh, the coil, the quantum heart coil, as a pendant um a lot of people too will use a cell phone tab because the cell phone tabs are one that if anybody isn't really into the energetics when you put that cell phone tab on it is taking your phone in that field that this creates and is producing that beneficial field and so and of course that's bringing in their light more as well so cell phone tabs are a good one for those who won't wear a pendant or um you know it's cheaper than the than the wisdom the divine i am generator but the divine i am generator is one that i would suggest um you know if if affordability is there and again we have that four pay system on the website too um but otherwise the quantum heart coil is would be a good one that i would suggest can you use the term visualize frequently? Oh, you use the term visualize frequently. How can those of us with mind blindness use any of these tools when we don't have the ability to visualize? Perfect. Thank you for that question, Liz. So, you know, truly imagination and tension are really powerful things. But if your sight, if you do not have that sight, the imagination, it is perfectly fine to not visualize. All you do is you still be in the heart space and you hold your intention. And again, the intention isn't about fixing Aunt Martha 
and I got to heal the situation, fix the situation. That's one of the things we really have to let go of is, is that wanting to save everybody. Truly the most powerful thing that we can do for another is simply hold our light. And so for those who cannot visualize things, it is simply being in the heart space and intending to share your light with that person or that situation. And the more that you uh, see, I used to never see either. Every night before I went to bed, I would go into the heart space. I would ask my higher soul self, please give me all the activations, attunements, whatever it is that I need to be able to start seeing. And the more that you're in the heart space and the more that you allow and not try, your sight can come in your knowingness. And that's it too. A lot of people that I know don't have vivid sight, but they develop a knowingness, which is like a sight. So, you know, totally, you know, totally know that those are just little blocks that you can release those blocks. So don't focus on the block itself of, you know, of, of being like, well, I can't see just let that go and just allow the energy to flow your consciousness and your light to flow a uh, jr does copper carry a stronger energy than the silver even though the silver is pretty and doesn't tarnish i can feel the copper a bit more so yes between the copper and the silver um it used to be that silver would never carry um a tensor field it was very is a very light sparse field as we have come into these higher tools. So like if you just make a 144 megahertz ring out of, ten, out of silver, you're probably not going to be carrying a tensor field. But when you start to work in these higher tools, like what we create here, um, you know, with the authority templates and such, then the silver is a little bit of a crisper, cleaner energy. It's almost like uh, it's working in like a higher, bandwidth of perception and so yes the copper tools i feel are are, are more tangible um in in a certain bandwidth so like the halos i can't wear a copper halo it's too strong for me the silver ones i love same with like a hedica ring the copper ones it's too much but the silver hedica ring i love i can still feel that energetics but it's not as as potent and so it's really dependent it's really person specific and so um you know one's not better than the other so yes it is totally you know go with what you are drawn to and it is nice to be able to feel the energies because then that allows the mind to be like okay there's something here and something working because it is tangible and i can feel it uh nancy when I wear the I am coil around my wrist at all times, I wear the I am coil around my wrist at all times. And how can I program it for amazing results for me? And I have never believed in any negative retrogrades either. <laughs> um, let's see. The I am coil. What is the I am coil? Do you mean the divine I am tensor ring possibly? I'll let you answer that. Um, so basically with, okay, so with the tensor ring, now really what holds our intentions and amplifies the intentions is the geometry of the tensor field generator. So that's why the tensor field generators, you can place your intention into that, collapse that, wear it around the wrist, and that will be holding and broadcasting those intentions for you. So the geometry is the intention holder, as is like the torus. Um, the torus, that will hold intentions. The Gaia sphere will hold intentions. Um, the coils, like the quantum heart coils, they will hold intentions. Um, they don't... Hmm, they're not as much for broadcasting. Well, the coils, because they too create that tube torus, that toroidal field, whereas there's that zero point space that will hold the intention too. But you know, that's just kind of a limited space. Um, I don't feel that's as, is, is a, 
as a physically tangible field versus the tensor field generators that because of the geometry this holds the intention now for a ring and you're putting that ring on your wrist now that's not to say that you can't still use your intention that it will won't hold and amplify that innately because it would be you as that powerful creator that you are that has that intention so when you bring through your intention and you put this ring on and you have the intention for for bringing through and broadcasting those energies this is simply something for your awareness whenever you put your awareness onto that bangle then you are bringing through those intentions because your awareness is 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 all that is needed especially when you have that intention with this and you put it on the wrist and you have that intention of it carrying those energies all it takes is your awareness onto it and you are bringing that intention back and holding that intention um so after you keep doing that for a while it's kind of that whole concept of integrating those energies into the body like we spoke with the Bader coil and how you have that on person and you work with your food that more that you use the tool and you have your intention for what you're doing the more that programs into your field so that then you become the one that carries and broadcasts that intention um so i'm just going to jump back over here to chat real quick uh, one question does um, about clearing the mRNA, the vaccines and meats. Yes. So basically anything that is DNA related, the tensor fields are working. That space is working to, to bring your DNA back to, to do. So this, this happened in the very beginning with our galactic ascension rings, which we don't make anymore, but we were seeing that on every one of the nodes of this ring was like this little DNA scrubber. And so, yes, it is working with the DNA of the body. So if you are working at clearing, you know, if you, if you have, if you have beef that has had these shots, um, yes, it will clear those because it clears things to that DNA. And so again, when you put that intention in there of going back to the beginning, to the birthing of that particular animal, and you bring that all the way through you are doing magic there. You are transforming everything about that plant, animal, mineral, whatever it is that you're ingesting. And again, after you start doing this a few times and you sit in, you know, in the heart space and you, and you just intend to bring that energy through after you do that for a while, it becomes a part of you. And then all you do is you have your attention onto your food before you eat it all then it takes is that attention and that gratitude and then it happens instantly so then you don't have to be mental about it every time um hanika i've placed a quantum grid point pyramid on its side on a table across from my bed so that the flat bottoms facing my bed it's nested in some tensor rings. I've never slept so good and have such vis vivid journey. That's fantastic. Yeah, the, the quantum grid points and the ascension grid pyramids, they really are fantastic underrated energetics. Um, let's see. Uh, here's a comment. I was reading recently that during the time of Atlantis, the energy of the moon as well as the sun were both used to energize things like we use electricity today. Do you think the Twisted Sage tools could facilitate this? If so, which ones would work best to harness and distribute these energies? So as far as just working with like the energy of the sun, so the energy, the sun is a consciousness of its own. Um, and so I've had people that will actually use the rings that connect with the sun and they'll hold it up between them and the sun and wow you and, and when you connect with the sun it is bringing in that amplification but as far as energy as in electricity um that's a whole different matter because you know as we're stepping into higher consciousness we're going to be able to basically we won't need electricity in a future time um, and that will just be in, it'll be consciousness, 
you know, but in the meantime, there are some great stepping stones to, to different free energies out there. Um, and you know, I, I have, I did a talk at the Tesla technology convention, gosh, almost 10 years ago. And, and that was one that we talked about too, about the possibilities of using tensor rings and pulling the energy out of them because they are room temperature superconductor. They contain an infinite amount of energy within themselves. And, um, there's gotta be a way that you can pull that out to translate that into electromagnetic. But again, I think eventually someday we're going to just step out of, out of the electromagnetic for using as energy electricity. But anyway, um, let's see, it's 10. We're going to, uh, we're going to go step right into the meditation here because I do have to get going as well. Um, so here we go. We're going to do an earth day meditation. So we're just going to connect in with the earth and we're going to take a little journey. So get settled in. And just step into the heart space. You can do that with a single breath if you wish, or an intention, or you can take the three breaths. Now, imagine yourself, and if you don't see and visualize, it is okay. Put yourself into that spot of nature that you most love, your special sacred space within nature, that place that brings you peace and joy, where you have the connection with the earth and of nature. Now allow yourself to drop down through the earth and step into the core of the earth. As you drop through all the layers of earth down into the very center, we used to take this journey to the center of the earth to meet Gaia, the spirit of the earth. As you drop down into this large cave near a body of water, and there may be this crystal sun that crystal sun is what we also connect to. It is just a crystalline energy, the consciousness of earth, the heart of the earth. But Gaia, as that spirit of earth, you can directly speak with her. As you're in the heart and you're in this giant open cavernous area, just imagine Gaia standing before you in however she presents as maybe an orb of light or as a luminescent being or just a feeling those tingles in the body that warm hug of the earth Gaia is a very powerful powerful transformer not only her energetically, but her physically. She is never in trouble. But it is the time that we begin to take more responsibility for the earth energetically. And again, it's kind of like working with another human in that you don't have to go out and do the things. We can begin energetically by simply bringing our light to the planet. So as you stand there with the earth, she may take you on your own journey. And again, she's not gonna show you all the atrocities and the bad things. That is collective consciousness or your mind that brings all of that through. Gaia is going to show you the beautiful things, the things to be grateful for, the 
beautiful nature of this planet, the beautiful nature of the earth. And you shining your light is simply you having that gratitude for the earth, for nature, that appreciation, that wonder, the joy. And that is what you allow to radiate into the physical of the planet. And again, not trying to fix or heal or judge. If you are brought to something that is dense with the planet, give it your gratitude as well. It is your light, your gratitude. That is going to change any of those dark, sticky things, situations, the atrocities, if you will, by simply bringing your light with gratitude and joy to even those darkest things. So if you go to a place like, let's say, the ocean where something is being dumped in the ocean or whatever, you're just sending your light. You're not being mad at the people in their limited consciousness. Rather, you are shining your light on that situation so that you bring higher potentials to those that are doing that with the earth. So any of those who do not treat the earth with the utmost reverence and respect, shine your light to them without trying to fix or heal. You are basically bringing in those higher potentials for them, allowing them to feel that gratitude you have for the earth. And I can feel the ripples all over the planet from what we are doing right here and now. And for those who watch this in the future, there's a lot of people that you're shining your light to that are changing their perspective with the earth. And again, we're not trying to force anything. We're just simply being the light of higher potentials. All right, everybody, I will let you be there with that. And I'm going to sign off. Happy Earth Day every day. And use this exercise as often as you can for everything on the planet. because it is your light, your infinite potentials that you share that is going to help shift and change the collective. Awesome. Enjoy. Happy Earth Day.